Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Satisfactory 1.0 playthrough. In our last episode, we finished this giant thing, which is a turbo fuel factory. And in this episode, we're going to build the rest of the turbo fuel factory, which requires a lot of our fuel generator X4. Now this blueprint we worked on, I think we did it on video. Um, it was a little bit hairy to get it working, and you can see we had to put two of them up on uh, elevated, um, what are these called, foundations, otherwise they didn't connect right, because the fuel generators literally take up exactly one-fourth of the Mark II blueprint designer. And so we had to do it like that, uh, but it works. And so we're gonna be, we're gonna be plopping these down, um, and I should just be able to connect them up to each other real easy. So each set of four is going to take a 5x5 five five space. And there should be room here uh, for three sets. Ooh, a concrete example. Oh no, motors. We need 60 motors for each of these. So we're going to be running out of those. Come on. Yeah, I think I want to increase the rates on my dimensional depots. Once I get home, we'll do that. We should have enough Mercer spheres. And heck, maybe I can find a couple extra spheres on the way back. Should just be able to build that. And now we just need to connect. We don't need to connect much. I should just be able to connect power like that. And that's done. We need to connect power for the whole build, which I haven't figured out where that's going to go yet. Um, and then we need our turbo fuel, which is this one, right? No, that's regular fuel. Turbo fuel is over here. Yes. All right. So then do a stackable. out this way and I'll probably do some sort of splitter over here or pipeline connector whatever it's called I don't remember good names A fluid splitter I guess they're not really splitters though they're splitters and mergers at the same time but yeah now I should be able to Power pole over this. Maybe I can just go this way. Picked up to this one. Alright. And then I don't know, we might need a pump on this. I'm uncertain. I'm uncertain. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll find out. I don't like that. I would like to have some sort of nice horizontal to vertical looking situation here. Something like this might be a bit better. Oh, that's the wrong thing. We need one of those on top. Yeah. There we go. Uh, but you're the wrong mark. The wrong mark? Who's Mark? Why do we care? Um, these should be fine if only the tops are upgraded. Also, the connection points are a little hard to see. I love that. So we're gonna have to find where two blueprints connect to each other. So it'll be in between every set of four. So right, right here. Yeah, that's a tiny little, tiny little gap. But it, we can build a pipe in there. 
so that's good. There we go, and then... Oh, look at the red! Look at the red! We have turbo fuel! Yes! All the way to the end? Might take a minute to get here. Um, there's fuel in that pipe. There's fuel in this pipe. Nice. Nice. Alright, how much turbo fuel each one uses? 7.5. Oh, I need 40 generators. Is that right? I need 80 generators. Holy cannoli. 20 gigaw- yeah, yeah, 4 per gigawatt. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we're gonna need a much- a lot more motors, first of all. <laughs> um, holy crap. I did not fully comprehend the magnitude, uh, of how many fuel generators we would need. 80 fuel generators, huh? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna need a few more foundations. Heck, I maybe should have built a two level eight fuel generator blueprint. Alright. So I think what I'm going to go for is 16. I think I can still fit four more back there. I hope. I'm going to try to fit four more back here. I can't destroy this thing, so it, it, uh, I don't know. We can always fudge it a little bit if I need to. Yeah. I might have to leave out a couple generators because of their clipping through this. But I should be able to set up another set back here. Oh, we're out of concrete. Classic. All right, uh, are there any Mercer Spheres nearby? No, I found them all. Um, Cause we're gonna need an increase on our <laughs> deposit rate into the Dimensional Depot. Oh God, all right. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's, uh, let's build one more set of generators before we do that. Because the reason I want to do one more set is then I have 16, and then I just need five sets of 16 along the way, and it'll be a nice kind of square. Um, basically a five by four square of two by twos squares. And five by four by two by two happens to be 80. So it works out nicely. Um, yeah, I need 164 concrete even just for that. All right, so we're gonna have to head and go upgrade our dimensional depots real quick. I guess I can do that right here. Hold on. We don't need to head home. Because I just need that upgrade. So all I need is 14 more. Why did I just deconstruct that? I just need 14 more fluctuators here. Which we can handcraft. Okay, we're gonna be okay. 14 more. There we go. Yeah, B. Jonas, we got the jetpack, we got turbo fuel. I don't have rocket fuel yet, though. I'm excited about that. Speaking of, when do I get that? I need... I need these canisters, which I assume I get somewhere in this tech line. Probably aluminum, something fancy with aluminum. Um... And then we can make rocket fuel, which 3,600 megajoules. I'm curious, how much is turbo fuel per unit? 
2,000. So it's almost double the fuel value of turbo fuel even. Oh my god. So you could get, instead of 20 gigawatts, you could get 36 gigawatts off of a Mark II. Well, that doesn't sound right. Oh yeah, it's 10 per second, so that actually is right. It's exactly right. Uh, alien technology, dimensional depot, upload speed, 120 per minute. Start the research. Ta-da. All right, so that should help quite a bit. Dimensional upload speed increased. The dimensional shift now no longer cares how complex the components of the original part are, and will save each part as a single collection of particles that can be instanced easily. Growth shift the body core flow cycle song of a five-layered shallow state. Five-layered shallow state. You know it. But are you saying there is another layer? Is it a sensor limitation? Deepen. Deepen. Helpful. Deepen. All right, uh, fuel generator X4. Get one more of these bad boys. Uh, there we go. I am really glad that I'm doing this with, with blueprints of 4X instead of 2X. Because then I only have to connect two things for every... Two things for every four generators built. Uh, you doubt the pressurized tanks are made of aluminum. Well, I'm just assuming it's that because that's the tier we're in. We've had steel for a while. It's I guess it's possible they use an old material to make a new thing, but we'll have to look at the tech tree. So this is one-fifth of our power plant. We're going to have five of these. That's insane. Um... Yeah, that's actually just legit insane. Yeah, we're gonna have enough power for a while, I think. <laughs> Goodness. And I think I want to build it all so we can make sure that we're getting the full 600 a minute turbo fuel too. Four times four is sixteen. Okay, I did, I did the math right. Um, but yeah, we're gonna struggle with these upload rates. Problem. Right. That. Yeah, that's the alignment we want. Oh yeah, that concrete, man. Come on. Oh well. Uh, for now, I'll just... Oh, this will be kind of nice. I can connect these guys up there. And then... You connect up like that. And if I only have 16 generators running, what's 16 times 7.5? It's the same as 8 times 15. It's only 120. So I actually don't need to upgrade these to a higher mark. Um, I just need to actually extend this kind of pipeline past the front of all of the generators something like that I don't even know if that'll be enough space width wise it might be and then I might do some prettification I'm not sure. I'll probably at least... I might just drop walls uh, to the to the terrain from the sides that I'm going to be seeing it most often. I guess I do want this to not look like it's floating. So let's grab a support. We'll put it right here. And 
this guy. Snap. And yeah, we can do a Mark 1 for all that. We don't need this to be Mark 2. Because a single set of 16 generators won't need 300. It only needs the, what did we say? 180? 120? That's fine. Build more? Are you gonna let me? I may just need to go grab a bunch of concrete. I don't think this is gonna work out. And yeah, we're gonna have to. Ugh, this is so annoying. We're just off by a little bit. Like literally, I guess one and a half foundations. Maybe, maybe two because of that. Hmm. So we'll have one set of four that we don't have built. I could build two of the four. Um, but it's probably easier to just leave a whole set of four just kind of, or unbuilt, I should say. And then we'll build an extra set of four somewhere. So this one will only be three sets of four. There, and here. And that should do it. I'll give it a second. Yep, there's the turbo. Turbo fuel. Seven point five a minute. And that's pretty long. Wow, we've, we've captured our max consumption now, so literally if every machine I've ever built that's connected to the power grid needed to run at the exact same time, and that includes a lot of things that are backed up and don't even have the potential to become unbacked up, um, <laughs> I would still be fine. So, so let's just breathe the smoke for a minute. Mmm, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, let's go back home for now. We're gonna have to come back to finish this. Maybe it'll be something I do in between videos. Some of the big mushrooms can be blown up, like these? Wait, are you are you for serious? Are you for cereal? Hold on, how do I get my weapons? Not that. Go farther. Oh my gosh! <gasps> so I can get rid of this dumb one? This one might be too big though. This is a really big one. It's got enemies on top of it. Oh my gosh. It worked. Thank you for saying that. Um, I wouldn't have thought of that. Come here, buddy. Let's keep shooting. All right, I need to go get that floating hatcher remains. All right, well, that was nice. Thanks for that comment. That was very helpful to know. I just assumed that thing was so big, I just wouldn't have even guessed that you could blow it up. Uh, all right, which way do we go? That way. Oh no, we're off the edge here. We need one more. Foundation along the back. Okay, so then connect to you, to you and we connect this to this. Alright, there's two fifths, which is four gigawatts we should have. And I'm pretty sure I grabbed that hard drive. Yes. So we'll work our way home now. Oh, there's some iron ore over here if I need it. I could make steel pipes. 
don't know why I would need steel pipes, but I could do it. We could do it. Alright, I need to switch over to liquid biofuel for our travel home. Hey, welcome, Broadband. Glad you liked the blueprint videos. There will be more coming. The plan is to finish the the early game series with... Um, so it'll have most of these building. It'll have all of these except for the blender. I'm, I'm kind of mid on packagers. I probably will include packagers on the early version. Manufacturers will then go into the next version as well as blenders into the Mark II blueprint designer. Um, because those are obviously not things that you have. So by the time you need manufacturers, you can basically access the Mark II blueprint designer. Technically, you get manufacturers first, but you can like almost like handcraft what you need to get the blueprint designer Mark II unlocked. So I figure it's not really worth building a blueprint that won't last you very long. Also, I think I heard that once you've designed blueprints, in a higher mark, you can basically start a new game and place your higher mark blueprints, even though you don't have access to that tier of blueprint designer, which feels a little wrong to me. I, I may have misunderstood what I read, but the way that I understood what I read was that basically if I were to, you know, beat the game on one save and design a Mark II blueprint designer, or Mark III blueprint designer blueprint, I could then start a new game and just build that from the start, which doesn't feel right to me. I feel like you should have to have access to the blueprint designer that the blueprints are designed in. I did get this one, right? I probably have checked this like a hundred times. Yes. But I don't know if, if I'm sure. Um, yeah, this is... I'm just using the jetpack with little bursts. Uh, the best way to do it is to get a belt like this, and then you launch yourself off the belt, and then you just use little bursts with the jetpack. And if you turn slowly, you maintain all of your horizontal speed too, which is super nice. The packaged liquid biofuel is the best for long distance travel, because it just has the most burn time. But if your goal is just general moving around your factory, you're going to want to use the turbo fuel um, because it just has a much higher vertical speed. So it's a lot more convenient. It it can also get you just about it. This was my testing tower over here. Um, so you can get that high with turbo fuel from from there. Uh, so it's literally taller than a radar tower. But the liquid biofuel can also get you that high, but it takes way longer. So I don't recommend the liquid biofuel for most of the time. But if you're traversing the map, the liquid biofuel is dope. Uh, Darquan, there are currently just two videos. Yeah, there's the smelters and the constructors. Tomorrow is assemblers, and the day after that is foundries, and then probably refineries, and then packagers, And that'll be it for the Mark 1. Or the early game series. <laughs> liquid biofuel, yes, yes. You get liquid biofuel once you get refineries unlocked. Or at least somewhere around there, I can't remember. But yeah, we're back here because we're heading to the MAM. And we are going to grab... How many Nobilisks do I still have? I have enough ammo to kill everything on the map multiple times over. I'm still good on that. I built a bunch and then deconstructed the factory because it was a spaghetti mess, but you know how that goes. Ooh, that's a cool effect. I've never really noticed that. It's almost like a... feels like you're playing like one of those old games, which have very... I don't know. There's like no graphic. It's just green. Green and black. When you look through the jelly. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the videos, Darkon. Okay, so we're gonna unlock 
bauxite refinement. So let's grab our motors. And I need more frames and computers and rubber. And then I just need a hundred more motors. So how do you manage the miners being off grid a little bit? Um, so I personally don't care too much. I don't mind my miners being organic looking, but you can uh, at least align things on grid if you build foundations on grid over the ore patch like this. So that's on the global grid and then you can still snap a miner to it. And I think you can make it, yeah, so this is like, I'm looking straight north. And so that's like a perfect on-grid miner. And you can even then deconstruct, if you want, the uh, foundations. It does look a little weird though, because then it doesn't make its little feeties extend. So it kind of just pokes out of the ground without the feet, but that is an option. What time is it where I stream from? Uh, it is currently 3.12 p.m. I am Eastern US time. Yeah, broadband, that's not a bad idea. The problem is there's four starting areas, so I would need to shoot four, basically four versions of the same video. All of which I would need to do research for, because I don't actually know what all the crash sites are. So I, that would be a that would be a very high effort video with a lot of time put into it. Uh, but it's not a bad idea. Um, having you know four versions of like an early crash site run where you like go to the crash sites that give you the items to get to the other crash sites. Um, that's definitely a good idea. Unfortunately, it's not precisely on construction grid. Wait, it's not? Oh, I think I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, because the center of the miner isn't itself going to be on grid. Um, it is angled properly, but then I think I see what you're saying. So if we do this... Yeah, I mean, if I was going to make just one... Uh, starting area, the grasslands would make the most sense because most beginners are going to be there. So yeah, like the angle here is on grid, but then if I build a belt, it's not going to sit on grid nicely here. Yeah, I see what you mean. I wonder if the easiest version then is to have it turn an angle first. Like this. And then... And then it's right angles. And now we're on grid with right angles. So there's an idea for you. To keep things looking nice and square. There's an idea. Alright. How many times am I going to reconstruct this dang thing? Alright. What am I even doing? I am researching bauxite refinement. That's what I'm doing. Gosh, phase four is going to be such a beast to complete. Search. Motor. Yay! Milestone reached. Bauxite is refined into aluminum products via a multi-step process. Mm -hmm. It is a multi-step process. Considering your past achievements, you should have the minimum required skill to overcome these new production challenges. If it helps, many others have done this before, so if you fail, someone else <laughs> will eventually succeed. Aw, oh, thanks, Ada. Always increasing my confidence. Um... Okay, so the nearest one is over here. Which isn't too far. My truck stations are over here. I could just bring that over with a belt and then use trucks. Uh, bah, bah, bah. That's an idea. Or I could use trains. 
I haven't touched trains yet, but that's certainly on the list of things I want to do. So... But we don't have a train blueprint going. I would have to, I would have to work on a train blueprint. Um, trains are so big. It's crazy. Look at this thing. But it would be cool to have a train station. And the nice thing is you only need one set of train tracks basically for the whole map. So that is a thing. I would probably have the train tracks just go straight through the middle of the red forest here over the top of the map because then I can easily build branches off to the sides to access more resources. I am doing long projects in this run. Maybe we just, maybe we just go for it. Maybe we just go for it and do trains. Why not? Why not? Um, let's, in that case, consider... The problem is the tracks. I'm okay building them fairly organically, following the terrain, and just building a foundation or two where necessary. I know a lot of people like to build these, like, elevated, you know, monorail systems where they're on tall foundations and what. I think I'm just going to follow the terrain and call it a day. And maybe I will regret that decision. But let's, let's try it. Let's build it. Let's build a train station right here. Um, it will be on grid. We're gonna go with concrete foundations for it. And how long should I make my... Uh, no, I need to be taller than this. I need to be above the terrain nearby. How long should I make... Oh, whoops. Should I make the train? That is the question. Alright, so this is the height I want my train stations at. Because I am a complete rookie when it comes to trains in Satisfactory. The only trains I've done were before they added in the fact that trains could even crash into each other. So like, it, it was before signals, it was before train crashing. It was very much a different, different world. And even then, I didn't do that much with them. I basically just built a point-to-point -point schedule. So I don't really know what I'm doing, which is why it's fun to figure it out. So what we're gonna do, trains are two-way, right? Like, I don't even know if trains are two-way by default. Do you have to build a locomotive on each end to make them two-way trains? Two-way trains seems like a bad idea though, right? But they have block signals. Uh, my head's starting to hurt. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. It's kind of fun to not know what I'm doing. So, so we'll start with our first uh, station. Whatever, I just need to build something to test a few things. Okay, so that's the train station. And then there's timetables. Um, they do face. Oh, it must be. Ba, 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 ba. So can I do? Great car. Train station. Oh, that's one I already built. Freight platform. Loading and unloading. Snaps to other platforms. Connected to a powered railway. Um, empty platform with catwalk. Ooh, that's nice.
So I assume I want a two-way rail system because trains can crash into each other. But the station itself, well, if it's turning too sharply, then don't let me. Oh, OK, there we go. Um, so if the station itself, what am I trying to say? is one way. I could just have a single rail coming in and out. I guess it depends on if I have multiple trains. If I have multiple trains, I'll need a full junction with like Factorio style stuff going on here. But otherwise, we should be okay. Like if this were to just merge back on to whatever this was connected to is what I'm getting at. Um, let's make it a four platform station, which means I need a lot more foundations here. And then we'll go freight platform. That feels like a lot of freight that I can carry. And I don't think I'm gonna need extra for a while. Can you can you filter? The other thing I wanna know is can you like filter freight cars? I don't think you can. So that means I would have to have a separate freight car for each resource. Interesting. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten resources plus nitrogen. Makes eleven. Yikes. Um, so maybe there's multiple train stations. For now, I'll just have four. I'm going to stick with four. And then... I need to put all my train blueprints on a quick bar here. So let's do railway. And then we'll do station and platforms, empty platform, and then all that stuff. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What am I missing? One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I missed empty platform with catwalk. Okay. So then if I do a locomotive and then freight cars. Let me power this thing up. Oh, Q opens this menu. Edit timetable. Train name. Ooh. All right, that's a that's a we can name our train and our train station after Patreon supporters. That's a good time for that. Let me pull up the name randomizer here. Hey, thanks for the follow, Soul Hug. I'll just call you Soul Hug. Uh, all right, name randomizer. We've already got Glam was the lizard doggo. Lodro is the factory building. And this is the icy train. Icy pie 31415. Sweet. Um, does it have its name like on the train? Or is it only when you open the menu? I'm not sure. Okay, well, power... Where's the nearest power? Actually, not right here. Is this... This is gonna clip, isn't it? Yep, sure is. That's annoying. 
Um... <laughs> I wish they made short power poles. Uh, you have to make your own. Power pull accomplished. Alright, and then back up to that. Build a power pole up here. Where does power go, I wonder? Oh, up there. Perfect. No power. Wait, what? Really? Oh, yeah. I, don't, I thought those two were connected. Okay, there we go. Trains powered up here. And then... These are all going to be set to unload. Unloading the train. Can you name the freight cars? No, I guess not. Alright, so then... Basically, just gonna... We're gonna use the terrain. Um, I'll have to use a lot of cluster noblesks, probably. And we're gonna have four freight cars. And that'll be good for, like, we'll get bauxite, uranium, and then maybe a couple other resources that I'm running low on here. Open train menu, manual driving, timetable. All right, I think this is going to work. And as long as each train has its own station, then I don't need a two-way kind of off-ramp. If that makes sense, if each train, if I have multiple trains using the same station because I need more throughput, then we're going to unfortunately need to like, because basically what I'm saying is we can mix these. I can have a T junction and the main rail. Can I like build up like I can with rails here? Uh, not really. Okay, so there may be a few times where to not clip with the terrain. I'm going to need to use architecture, maybe big concrete pillar or small concrete pillar. I'm not sure. Or maybe frame pillar. Which one looks weirder with rails? Is it the big one or the little one? Big pillar probably looks better. Yeah. Yeah, that looks that looks a bit better. It's weird that it doesn't snap. Um like on foundations it snaps. But on these, it doesn't, it doesn't, like, snap to a grid point on them. I wonder if you build a foundation on it, and then underneath it, and then deconstruct it, then you can snap to that foundation, and then you deconstruct the foundation. It's a pain in the butt, but yeah, then you can get kind of the snappage. So that'll snap to exactly the center of the of the platform pillar. Interesting. Maybe it looks good if we do something like this. Maybe that's what we build. Yeah, that looks pretty good where we need it.
All right, we got some trees to get rid of, though. You guys are in the way. Foliage is a joke. Who needs it? Ah, yes, the railway. Making room for progress since, I don't know, the 1800s. Whenever locomotives were invented. Um, okay. So yeah, how do we merge railways? How does that work? Hmm. Ah, like that. Okay. Turns too sharply. Okay, so I need to like go up here. I really wish there was a way to build up without having to do this song and dance. I bet I can go up to maybe. Yes. Okay. That's reasonable. And then... And then this is entering... What will end up being a two-way track. So there's going to be another... Oh, a two-way track. That just makes it worse. That means I need... Double foundations and pillars. I can't even see. Oh god, that's annoying. Um, maybe I should do one pillar for both foundations. Then it's harder to snap. I guess you win some, you lose some. Huh? Is that even? That one's not centered. All right, so anyway, we're gonna have two rails. Right? Yeah. Hmm. And then basically this connects to both. to go to this intersection, too close to another switch. So you can't have like a four-way intersection like that? Hmm. What am I trying to do? I Look, if we look at the map, the two ways going to terminate here. So, I don't really need I don't really need this to be two separate ones. Basically, I can have this one be separate. Just go up there. It's a little ugly. It's quite a lot ugly, in fact. All right, we need foundation uh, on nine here, so I can grab that a little easier. Um, yeah, so we can just have this be a two-way, or two separate one-ways, I should say. And then in another world, we would continue this one. Yeah, this is what I've basically been trying to do. It's so similar to Factorio and so different at the same time. But basically, in another world, 
That looks so weird when one goes up and one goes down. Um, we would branch off like this, and basically we would have to use block signals uh, to make sure that trains wouldn't intersect. And then some trains would come off at this stop, other trains would keep going and get off at a different stop. We can add that functionality in later. For now, I'm only gonna have the one train, so I don't need that functionality, but we can definitely add it. And basically now we just need to build a two-way rail track that goes all the way to the box site. So that's gonna be a bit of a project. And we'll see. We'll see if following the terrain gets us in trouble or if it ends up working out. Um, but it's what we're gonna do. And we'll just slowly... How far away is it? Painfully far? It's actually not that bad. What's that, like a kilometer? Uh, you're gonna tell me? Yeah, 1072 meters. That's not bad at all. Oh, hey guys. I heard gunfire and you wanted to join the party, huh? Well, let me tell you something. It does not end well for you. All right, let's get rid of these grass pieces. Trains don't like grass. Oh, I love clusters. They're just so enjoyable. All right, and then the S the S bending of these is really annoying that you can't change the angle with the scroll wheel like you can with a belt. So it kind of forces you to like make the S bend yourself. So if you're like if you want to S bend, you first have to do that part, and then you can do this part. But even then it like changes the angle depending on how far away you've walked and so you gotta kind of like get it going at the angle you want but in the spot you want i'm definitely gonna call a little bit of jank on this i say it's a bit janky all right uh let's build pillar see even that then we have to face it the right way I guess I can build one on the side, and then build that one. Does that work? No, because it won't let me build that one vertically. Oh no, it does, it does, if I do it that. No, that still isn't it. Um, ooh, what if I do that, I leave it, and then I do... No, that doesn't work. The foundations. Um, I change snap mode. No, I won't build to the side of it. What if I have two on each side and then I build a foundation? Does that work? Oh, surprisingly, that works perfect. Okay. Yeah, this is where we need blueprints. This is where we need blueprints. Obviously, yeah, that doesn't even work. To be fair, the ground following algorithm is not bad. But it is a pain. It is a pain. So I may need to make a little blueprint for just this stand. Maybe with a short rail segment on top, so then it's easier to connect one to the next. Let's do that. So, special blueprint designer. I don't think we'll need a Mark II for this. I'll just drop this here. You know what, it'll be easier if I line them up. Like so, nine. And one. Is 
the railway too long for this? Probably. Yes, it is. How short can a railroad track be? Just a smidgen longer. Okay, it's one smidgen there, and it looks like it's two smidgens there. And we get it balanced. The number of smidgens. Looks like it needs to be two smidgens on each side. So there's two plus two. But it wasn't in the middle. I wish I could see through the hologram. All right, so the middle, one, two. Why is it not letting me do that? Not two smidgens was enough. One, two. Do we need three smidgens? Maybe we need three smidgens. Yeah, apophenia, exactly. A smidgen is, is an exacting measurement. No, see, that's letting me now go two less smidgens. What is going on here? So that's one, two, three, but that was too far, but two wasn't enough. Are you gonna do me like that? Oh, there we go. Okay. That's all we want. There we go. All right, so the question is, am I okay with this overhanging? And I think the answer is yes, because then we're even less likely to clip into stuff. So then we need to follow our same two smidgen, one, two smidgen distance. One, two, smidgen. Perfect. And there we go. So then this is our little our little rail stand. Train pillar uh, four meter tall. Technically it's five meters, because four plus one is five, but whatever. I'll call it four meters. Uh, select icon. Pillar. Color. Everything with trains is going to be blue. Very blue. That's too blue. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of blue we want. Uh, directory. I think I want a new category called trains and the icon is trains and the subcategory is stuff there we go all right clear escape deconstruct and we're good to go now I can get those pillars wherever we want without too much effort. Oh, it didn't save in that category. Weird. All right, but we can kind of plonk these train pillars wherever we need to and hopefully connect things up nicely. And it does, it does S-bend things when you're connecting from one to the other, which is really nice. Okay. I dig, I dig. Oops. Um, where are we going? Where did we come from? Where did we go? We need to go around the giant pit. The pit of despair. All right, clearing vegetation this area. Probably you. Definitely you. Definitely you guys. That one. Come around here. Oh, lost that explosive. So we have to go around the pit. Very up. We're, we're up there. So how are we gonna climb? 
Part of me wants to climb the terrain. Another part of me wants to make giant pillars. Uh, let's go with the giant pillars option. I don't mind. We can imagine the planet has low gravity and our materials have very high uh, strength. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. So, blueprints. Train pillar. Okay, so train pillar. We need one here. One there. Okay, this makes it way easier. Not gonna lie. I should have started with this. And then we're coming around the... Hey, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Alright. So, connect. Connect. So it does do splines when you're attaching one to another, which is interesting. But it doesn't do splines when you're building it yourself with an endpoint on the ground. And that's where I think the mistake is. I think they should let you spline it. Um... Are train pillars new? Uh, no, train pillars don't exist. This is a blueprint I just made. Which, uh, I need to note, if I'm building it on uneven terrain, I may need to build an extra pillar for the side that's lower. But yeah, train pillars don't exist until you make them exist. Yeah, blueprints really changed this game. Like, I I am a big fan of blueprints. Um, they really make a difference. For the better. Alright. So, now we need a... To put it lightly, to put it succinctly, bluntly... A uh, big-ass ramp. All the way up there. In fact, the angle might be too large. I don't know what the max angle is. But we may need to even do a little spirally up there or something. Oh, boy. Okay, so step one is... Step one is what? Building... Big pillar here. To start. Let's see how high we can go. I feel like that's probably too high. <laughs> look, look at what it. <laughs> well, we're not a roller coaster here. Look at what it's doing. It's like trying to build it up the side of this thing. No, that's silly. Come on. Come on. All right, railroad track is too, too steep. I almost said too steep. Okay, so I can handle that. What if I build a train pillar? Um, can I hit H and then nudgy, 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 nudgy? I can. And then I'll build the other pillar down from here, basically. Okay, of course that's too steep. So, decon the blueprint. Loop de loops, corkscrews, we can get the whole shebang going. The whole shipping. Alright, uh, H. No! Oop. Okay. This would be a time where I should probably switch to liquid biofuel so we have a bit more time, a bit more air time so I don't accidentally off myself here. Alright, I'll lock it while I'm standing on it. Build it, and then build this. Connected. Oh yeah, we're gonna need to do some curves. We're gonna need to get curvy with- maybe I go up to there. That seems a bit more reasonable, actually. Um, problem is I can't even- <sighs> yeah, that looks realistic. It's fine. I have no qualms. Do this. I guess I could tr I could build a railway kind of underneath it, and then I can see how far we can go with that. Okay, so I can go to about here. 
And then I'll build pillars to match. All right, so I'm gonna pause the YouTube recording for a bit here while we work on this. You guys will get to skip some of the, the tedium here. All right, welcome back, everybody. We have built uh, our first T-junction. So we made it up. I still haven't zooped the foundations down, so we need to do that. So they're not just floating, but we will do that. And then we made it up to here, and I decided we're gonna belt the bauxite to here. I also don't know how this works exactly. I think... I don't love the clipping, so I might find something different to do with that. I'm not exactly sure. Because I actually, I don't mind when it's like this, when they go directly through each other, because that's often how real trains work. But this one looks a little weird. So maybe I need to elevate those ones higher. Anyway, we'll figure that out. Um, but all that to say, I think if we do block signals for all six of these, it'll just work. I think if it was Factorio signals and you just did signals so that no one can enter this block, unless they can get out, then that, that signal would work. So I don't know for sure, but I think that'll work. And we're gonna plop a train station over here. I forget how big they are. Uh, we're gonna need space for the train to turn around too. So this is gonna be like a lot bigger than this. We'll have to build supports for this, I think. And probably build out one more tile here. Do a little bit of tree removal. And there's a lot of quartz right there. I don't know what, what kind of nodes are these? Is this a pure node? Ooh, that's a pure node, and that is a normal. So we've got a lot of quartz right here too. There might even be more than those two nodes. Uh, no, that's it. Okay. But for when we need more quartz, that's gonna be handy. All right, so we're gonna do three freight platforms. Oh, it won't let me place a freight first? That's kind of weird. Because I, I can't count backwards. I guess I can build it backwards. Surface is too uneven. Okay, so we need more foundations here. You need basically a five wide foundation area for your platforms. Good to know. Okay, and then this one, you know what? I can just have that not arrive right here. That's fine. And then we don't need to worry about this blueprint. Okay, so then we're gonna do four freight, freighty freights. Now what I'm curious about is, is it gonna, are these directional? Or are these omnidirectional? That one's backwards. Also, uh, Andrews X, thanks for the follow. Welcome to Crydania. spam as usual and then freight platform boom 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 i don't know why i'm building four when i'm only gonna be loading one thing here but it's fine so i guess i can ditch this last one so i think i'm gonna assume this is fine even though i built those freight platforms of facing the other way. I feel like they're symmetrical and it won't matter. I hope. If it doesn't work that way, I'm screwed. Okay, it won't let me build that. Uh, how about that? There we go. Alright, now is that one 
good. Let's just make sure. So you can come from here to here. That signal, I guess that's never gonna matter because they're never going that way. They're coming in to this way and they'll be coming out on this line. We'll need to hook up and get rid of some poison gas here. And so we're going to need to turn around, which we need a few extra tiles for that. Goodness. They do not make tight turns, needless to say. All right, um... Looks like we can do that. And then we should be able to S-curve our way back to this foundation where we will reconnect with everything else. Ouch. Where is it? Is it underneath? Ah, it is underneath. Yeah, those big plasma bombs do so much damage if they get a direct hit on you. You do not want to get hit by that. Does like four or five hearts. I guess they're not hearts, whatever they're called. Bars. Four or five bars of damage. Um Yeah, there we go. Okay. We finally might have what could be described as a train station. And that one connects to that one. This one connects over here to this one. Railroad Tycoon, heck yeah. Got an award. All right, and then we need to name our stop. So this is the Sputnik. Boxite stop. And that train station we need to rename. I forgot to rename that. And yeah, I should be able to load Boxite in. Um, I don't know. That'll clear a train, surely. So we'll bring in three, four, five. I think four will clear a train, but let me double check by building a train here. Uh, six. Yeah, yeah, four clears a train. So that's perfect, actually. And that actually lines up exactly flat which means this is equivalent to being at the second height level because a lift raises you two levels at minimum. And then we're going to go up there to get bauxite. So we'll come over here. Hope belts can come this far. Perfect. And then we'll use a lift probably from the edge here. Might need a double lift. Oh no, there's a spider. Multiple spiders, eh? Oh my god. Where? Oh, they're all. Oh, there's just a whole pile. Okay. That's fun. Alright. The name of the game is Avoid and Evade. And 
fill the area with bombs. And eventually we jump and fly and ah! You got me. Go back. Are they all dead? Nope. It's weird those only give you five, because to me those feel more dangerous than the radioactive hogs, which give you seven. Hey, see you later, Darkwan. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, there'll definitely be more of them, don't you worry. Keep your eyes peeled. That's really high up there. But actually, how high we need to go, funnily enough. Okay, so we'll do a few more booms right here. Get rid of this foliage. Probably have uranium end up being on this belt too, because we've already got the train ready to go, and we've already got, you know, everything hooked up. So it would just make sense to have uranium here. So that feels smart. And if we check the map, we are not too far from bauxite. It's basically just northwest from here. So I will travel northwest. Building stackables as we go. There will probably be enemies that will try to kill me along the way, because this is a dangerous area. Indeed, indeed. But if I just ignore enemies and go fast enough, maybe we'll be fine. As long as they're not spiders. Spiders can't really be ignored, unfortunately. How close are we now? Very close. Uh, I'm going in the right direction. Just gotta keep going. Gotta get rid of a lot of trees, though. Such a dense forest. One's gonna clip, so I need to in front of it. And I think I see the bauxite. <gasps> I think I see it. Oh my god, we did it! Alright, production. Miner Mark II. Face over here. Something's trying to kill me. Okay, it's not even a mega hog. No big deal. Uh, let's see. Build that up to the second level. I probably already have power lines close. I have a huge network of power lines. Didn't even use power towers because I completely forgot they existed. So for those of you in the comments or watching on future YouTube that have thought to yourself, why is he not using power towers? It's because I forgot they exist. They're a new thing and I just completely spaced it. So there you go. Hope that's a satisfactory answer. Uh, unfortunately, I just forgot. So yeah, we could have avoided some of this spam. Because power towers are... Oh, God. I should... Oh, that is a radioactive hog. Not just a regular one. Yeah, power towers can connect really far. 
Like, like really far. That's at least three power lines worth in one power tower. This thing is not gonna leave me alone either. These guys are so annoying. So I just have to sit here and pelt him. Waste him from a distance. Wait, that was it? Something else must have damaged him already. Yeah, probably these guys did some damage on him somehow. Because they normally take like four or five clips to take one out. These things are way weaker. These are closer to like one clip if you hit all the bullets. Maybe slightly more than one clip, 20 bullets maybe. Okay, so that's done. Blow up a few more things since I'm here. Oh, and there's spiders waiting for me down here? Oh my goodness. We just got a welcome party. Thankfully, oh god. I do have to go faster than that. And I just happen to be out of ammo right now. Inconvenient. Here come the jumps. Oh, I wonder if they damage each other when they jump. That would be really convenient. Uh, they might not, though. I really need to research the other types of ammo. I think I have another one available now if I wanted to. Um, the rocket fuel research gets me the, like a, probably just a more damaging type of ammo, but I think homing ammo is somewhere on the list that I can get. Is that right? Where was homing ammo? Yeah, I probably should get this. All I need is 10 high-speed connectors. Hold on. I don't know why I haven't tried that yet. I kind of forgot about it. Um, let me make... Let me make that, because that's only a few clicks. And that seems really fun to me. Not having to aim seems pretty cool. all we needed uh and more ammo and we build the ma'am bam bam thank you ma'am and we go to Caterium. was there ammo in the other ones yeah there's the turbo rifle ammo which i can research oh my gosh it's not the rocket fuel my brain connected that but i just need aluminum casings which i have funnily enough and i can also research six more inventory slots heck yeah okay i've been i've been sleeping on some of these Upgrades. Um, anyway, homing rifle ammo. What does it actually cost, is the question. Homing rifle ammo unlocked. This ammo can be loaded into a normal rifle and, when it's fired, will seek a target. Clarification. This does not make the rifle a homing rifle. If you leave the rifle alone, even when loaded with this ammo, it will not return home like a devoted and adorable puppy and or kitten. <laughs> it is not a homing rifle. It will not come home. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, the problem is I haven't automated high speed connectors, so I need to do that. And I de-automated or unautomated the rifle ammo, so we're going to have to either re-automate that or just use my stockpile and hope it's enough to last a while. I don't really know. Uh, let me overclock this bauxite node before I get too far away and forget about it. Because I certainly want to make this effort worth it. I think this was a pure node. Maybe it was just a normal. I hope it's a pure node. If it's not, I could maybe get one of the other ones nearby. It is a pure node, thank god. Okay. 
Uh, so that means we got the full 600 a minute, which I can't even take advantage of on this belt. And we'll bring that over to the train. And that'll be a perfect place to call it the end of the YouTube episode because we're at an hour and 25 minutes already. These have been a couple of long episodes. But yeah, that should do it. Here comes the bauxite. Here comes the bauxite. Dee, 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 dee. And then it goes down. And around. Hooray! Into the train. Okay, and now we should be able to do train timetable. Uh, timetable, trains, edit timetable, plus, plus, save changes, turn on self-driving. Guys, I think we have a train that's coming to get bauxite. And that's set to load. According to the map, the train is not moving. Okay. We might still have some issues. Um, <laughs> no, why are you not moving? Uh, oh, it is moving. <gasps> it's moving. It's moving. Yes. This is the most exciting dot I've seen moving for a long time. Look at how fast it's going. That thing's zooming. Way faster than that tractor coming downhill. Oh, it went across the bridge. It's gonna go around here, then it's gonna go up across the giant chasm. Which we can probably see it by now. Not quite, it's off in the foggy distance. There it is. Here it comes. She'll be coming around a mountain when she comes. I still need to zoop the pillars down. Don't worry, I'll do that. Alright, can I land on top? Or will it kill me? I can land on top. Sweet! Catch a ride! What happens if you're sitting on top? Does it kill you? I mean, I have to know. Uh oh. Oh no, this is right. I have to know what happens. <laughs> this feels like it should kill me and I should get an achievement for it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how I feel about what's happening right now. But what I expect to happen is I'll just glitch out of the, the spot. Or get stuck. Yeah. <gasps> it did kill me! Okay. Nice. All right. Well, I was not ex actually expecting that to kill me. That that makes me happy. I'm not normally so happy to, to die. But here we are. Thankfully, we should be able to get back there pretty easy because the train's coming back now. And then we're going to rename this station to... Who's next? Tom. Tom Station. We'll call it the Tom Home Station. Tom Home Unload. And here comes the train, with which we can catch a ride back. Okay, I mean that took a while to set up, but the good news is now it's gonna be super easy to add the quartz that's over there onto the train. We're gonna be able to add uranium, which is somewhere up on that red forest area, onto the train. And what we can do is we can keep extending the train stops, you know, like out over here, and we can make other train stops where the same train can go to load more of the same resources, or we can have another train stop at home that has a different configuration of like, which cars have which resources, right? So. This train is gonna have, you know, bauxite, 
uranium quartz and maybe a fourth thing, but then we can have another train that has a different arrangement of stuff. Yes, trains one, Crydex zero. photo of the thumbnail. I think that could be it. I'm, I'm pleased with how fast it continues going even when it's going uphill. That really helps with the speed. Like the round trip is not very long for this. Makes it feel like I've gone like no distance at all. Alright, where did that crate end up? Oh, it's just floating right here. Perfect. I'll take that, thank you. So how much are we actually loading, I wonder? Bloop, or my thumbnail should probably be something like this. Actually get the train in there. Sweet. So it's got eight times four. It's got 32 slots. Oh, it's got our head taken off. Um, so with 32 slots, whoa, there's a speed boost for you. With 32 slots, we would need one every, what, every five minutes to maintain 480 a minute, roughly, every six minutes, um, which, I don't, doesn't it tell me the round trip, actually? Uh, no? I thought it measured the time. not? I thought it measured the timing somewhere. Does it tell me on the train itself? Uh, open train menu? Hmm. I guess it doesn't. I thought that was a thing. But we can always time one. It, I'm guessing it's about three minutes. Um, it's definitely not super long. And yeah, we can always add more trains to the to the schedule. Though I don't know what happens when you you have more trains than you have stations. I guess they just wait behind each other, which in this case would be okay. It's kind of like you need stackers in Factorio. But I assume I could have two trains on this rail and it would still work. But anyway, uh, we're going to call it an end of the episode. So for your future YouTubians, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.